All right, it is March 7th, 2023. And I just spent about an hour on my back porch planting a bunch of lettuces and spinach and herbs, cool weather herbs, uh, and my planters, which I'll show you here in a little bit. And now with this beautiful sunshine, I'm bringing my boys out and we are going to prep this garden bed uh, for the summer. So this is my west, east, west, west garden. And this year, this is going to be the warm and hot weather plants. Last year, this was the cool season plants. Got all my cabbages and Brussels sprouts. They did have some peppers out here, uh, had beans and peas. But this year I'm making this, um, the garden for like my tomatoes, peppers, squashes, eggplants, uh, corn, things like that. So it's March 7th. So I have two months before our last frost date. So what we're gonna do is we've been putting all kinds of uh, nutrients out here. So we've got lots of chicken manure, rabbit manure, straw, wood chips. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna, and this has been cooking basically over the course of the winter. So we're gonna take these tarps, these dark opaque tarps, and we're gonna lay them down to cover the entirety of this garden. And what that's gonna allow is for the sun to cook, help cook all these materials and continue to break them down so that the soil is really nice and rich for when I start plant planting after March 5th, if not later. So that's a good two months, 60 days that this will get to cook. Um, that's also plenty of time for any sort of bacteria or anything that's in that manure to break down. The other thing that really is great about covering yeah, up your garden, green. you want the green side up or the brown. It doesn't really matter. This other one, the silver, we'll want the silver side down. Okay. So go ahead and stretch it. The silver attract, attract heat? Uh, it will reflect instead of attract. Um, the other thing that's really great when you lay tarps down like this, again, you need to make sure they're dark and opaque because if you lay a light or a white tarp down, it's actually going to allow the plants underneath it to continue to grow, which is what we don't want because the purpose is we're trying to kill out the weeds that are still underneath here. I have a lot of them already taken care of, but there's still a bunch back here that I really had to battle last summer with my potatoes. So we're going to be killing out the weeds. We're going to be cooking cooking, do my lasagna gardening style here. We're cooking the nutrients and all the organic materials we've laid down. And the third great thing about laying a tarp down like this is it's going to bring the earthworms to the surface. So in a normal garden, if you don't have it covered like this, the earthworms will not come to the surface because the minute they sense light, they, they stay underneath. So by having this tarp on here, it's going to appear dark to them and they will come all the way to the surface of the dirt and turn and do what they do as earthworms. So again, threefold here, kill the weeds, cook the nutrients, cook the organic material and allow the earthworms to come through. Now I pretty much know where my gardens are gonna lay. Um, I, I can also encourage people if you want to, to go ahead and mark out your garden beds before you do this process. But I, time is of the essence. And so I wanna get these down. I already know the size of my gardens. I'm gonna do a three foot to four foot wide bed that uh, goes from the, um, all the way from the, <laughs> what is this? East to the west. So running long ways, they'll be 40 foot long and three to four foot wide with a three foot path between them. And the purpose of that is I really wanna maximize this orientation east-west with the sun and also doing more of a crop slash intercropping style gardening, which I talk a lot about in my garden design 2.0, 2.0 workshop. So um, last year, my beds were oriented north-south and I had a bunch of short ones. This year, they're gonna be long and again, three to four, four foot wide. So we're gonna start this process. You can see how it gets done. All right.
that is pretty much that. I did find, oh, looky here. She stuck up a potato from last year. <laughs> I know you always uh, miss them when you're out here and this one actually is still in really good shape. So I probably could use this as one of my seed potatoes. <laughs> um, so I did realize that we somehow miscalculated and we still have this whole section that needs a tarp. But the good news is that for the most part, this stuff is pretty covered with straw and sand and um, probably won't have too much of a weed burden, but I'll probably still need to get a tarp out here just to make sure I'm not battling the weeds. But other than that, these tarps will really, really, really help set the tone and uh, prepare the garden for, for when I put those plants out in May. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and then this other garden here, I'll show you in a second, is really pretty much ready to go. We just need to come and loosen the soil up a little bit where we're gonna put these plants. Part of the reason that this garden is really nice and ready to go is because I had the chickens in here after the end of the season and they did a really great job scratching all this down, eating all the extra plants that were still in here, tilling it with their little claws. So that really, really, really helped prepare these beds. The only issue that I can foresee right now is over here on this section where I tried to grow, where I did grow onions and did not successfully grow garlic last year. There were just so many weeds I could not control them. So <laughs> I've got a bunch of cardboard laid down over here to help kill out those weeds. I'm probably gonna have to get another tarp or some more cardboard to help kill out this area right here before I start planting in it. Other than that, the rest of this really is pretty good to go. And I spent the day uh, Sunday, so two days ago, drawing out my plans for this garden. And um, so my plan here is to have potatoes all along this fence line. This is 40 feet here in two, I think two rows, and then have a row of cabbage in front of that. And then depending on how many potato plants I have left, I'll either do another row of potato and cabbage here, or I'll do it behind me on this fence line. Um, so it really kind of depends on how many potato plants I still have left after doing two rows over here. But all of this in here will be my potatoes, my cabbages, my kale, uh, radishes, carrots, my lettuces and spinaches. Um, I'm trying to remember what else I had on my map. My broccoli, cauliflower, all of those, the brassicas especially, will be in this garden. Oh, beets, kohlrabi, that is all going in here. And I'm intercropping it. So I'm doing kind of like a like a monocropping slash intercropping style where I'm going to have, you know, long rows of things with other things planted right next to them. So like I said, potatoes with a cabbage row. Um, I'm going to have kale with a, you know, large dinosaur kale with arugula planted and spinach planted underneath it to keep it shaded. Um, what were some of my other, oh, kohlrabi and beets grow really well night right next to each other and i'll have to share with you a picture of my plans but that is all going in here and i've got um, a four foot bed a three foot pathway a four foot bed and then the center pathway and then i'll do the same thing over here four foot bed three foot pathway four foot bed so i'll have one two three four 40 foot long beds that are three to four foot wide in this garden and it'll be pretty much the same thing over there so um, my only plan for expansion will be what I've talked about before is expanding out here past these fence lines where I'm going to be doing pumpkins and winter squash and potentially corn. I'm afraid the deer will probably get to the corn, but I don't really have room for it. I don't think in these beds. So I'll either have to, oh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to put the, <laughs> I was going to put the corn right here. Right now, this is the chick, another part of the chicken run past this fence line. So we're either going to take down this fence or just plant all the corn with some um, pumpkins underneath in this bed here. That's what I was gonna do. So that should be plenty of room for the corn that I wanna grow, both popcorn and sweet corn. And then out here where the chickens made this pasture will be the pumpkins and the winter squash. So that's the plan. So pretty much just right now, making sure these beds are ready to go. And I will be moving plants out here, hopefully this week and early next week. So I'll be putting out potatoes, onions, uh, peas, and uh, possibly some cabbages if I feel like they're ready. So again, it's May 7th, May 7th, March 7th. <laughs> so I am planning on getting some crops out here this week. Woohoo for spring. Okay, that's it for now. Oh, I was gonna show you my, my planters in the back. So I'll do that before I wrap up this video. 
All right, the last thing that I did today was I got, for the most part, these green stock planters planted with lettuce greens and herbs and celery. Now, last year I had them over here on this kind of like back patio, um, back here behind our house, and they got plenty of sunshine. It's just, I kind of forgot about them because they weren't in uh, like the main places that I go on a daily basis. So in my Garden Design 101 workshop, I talk about accessibility and things being accessible to where you are, like where are your heavy, high traffic areas? Where are you gonna be? You kind of want your garden to be in your way so that it's not forgotten because trust me, it will be because you don't wanna go out there and do the work sometimes. Um, so the plants that I had in that planter really just kind of got forgotten and left behind. So what I decided to do, and I made, you know, I may decide that even this isn't, um, in the best spot, but I put these right off our living room um, door here because I can see them. They will still have plenty of sunshine and shade because they'll, uh, you know, most of these are cool weather plants and they only need three to six hours of sunshine, which they'll get out here. This is the south side of our house, but because um, of all the trees that are back here, they're not going to be overrun with sunshine. They'll get sunshine, but not too much. So, um, We'll see how these do. <laughs> they are cool season plants. I'm probably going to have to add some frost cover on them if the nights get too cold. Um, so I planted a uh, butter crunch lettuce, um, a couple different kinds of lettuces, romaine, little babies, butter crunch, I think. I did parsley, cilantro, some dill. Um, what was the other thing that I planted? Spinach. I actually did some Swiss char just to kind of see how they do. I've got lots of Swiss chard plants. I'm not worried about losing too many of them and they have pl plenty of time to, uh, for more plants to start. So some of this is kind of experimental and some of it's just hoping that I'll get um, some lettuces and cooler weather plants growing sooner than later. I also am trying to open up room on my seed starting shelves inside uh, to make room for tomatoes and things like that. So. Anyway, I'm really excited that I got these planted out here and I will keep you updated as to how they do. So if you haven't heard of these, they're called green stocks. I'll leave the note in the um, down below. Uh, they're a great product. They're run by a family here in the United States and I've really enjoyed having them. I just wanna find the best spot for them where I will use them to their maximum potential. So anyway, for right now, they're out on a back porch and my thinking is these are things that we'll cut from and eat from on a regular basis, you know, herbs and lettuces and spinaches. So I can just quickly harvest them and take them right inside to the kitchen. So we'll see. All right. Well, again, today's March 7th, 2023. So we're moving into the spring and uh, I'll be posting more videos as things move along here on the farm. Okay. We'll see you in the next video.